What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Crazy for KVs RC. I'm Tim. Thanks for watching. Um, back here uh, at home. Things are somewhat back to normal. Um, off work today. It's Monday. Uh, following ECC. But this video is going to be kind of two different parts. Part one is going to serve as a day three slash uh, wrap up for the entire event for me. And then part two is going to be lessons learned things I think every beginner, uh, first time competitor should think about, um, should really try to heed these warnings, learn from my mistakes and take those lessons learned into their first competition to make it the most enjoyable, um, best experience possible with hopefully an even better outcome than worked out for me. This entire series, uh, from the beginning, of me basically announcing that I was going to be competing for the first time all the way to this video really wasn't intended for anyone who has, you know, any experience with competitions, but it was intended to kind of show the entire process of getting through your first competition from planning the build, doing the build, your first run with the build. Um, and actually that kind of goes into some of my lessons learned and things I would do differently, but uh, if you are experienced and you think I could have done something differently or you don't agree with my lessons learned, then let me know in a comment down below. I look forward to hearing them. Um, and obviously all your guys' wisdom, there's a lot of it out there on the internet. So anything I can learn from y'all, I'll take as a win as well. But anyways, we're going to jump into it. We're going to talk about day three and then kind of wrap up of the event. And then we'll get to the lessons learned after that. So... Day three, we didn't really do much vlogging. I shot a few videos, but it was pretty much just me driving up to the event and uh, home from the event and didn't do a whole lot of vlogging there. Um, got there around the normal time, around 8.30 in the morning, and I was really just treating it as like my um, you know, play day, if you will, or fun day. The entire weekend was fun, but it was a day where I wasn't competing. I was not on the hook for anything. I could pretty much do whatever I wanted and just enjoy the terrain and the company of all the wisdom around me and great people. Um, I did do a lot of running with the RC Speedy A1. If you're unfamiliar with that, I'll link that up here. Um, basically, it's a uh, performance-oriented titanium caged buggy. Uh, the chassis is built by RC Speedy, and it's running Vanquish transmission, uh, VFD twin, and uh, F10 portals on big uh, 525 cut and shuts from West Desert Wheeler. And it's an awesome performer. I threw the uh, D shock bands on it and it does really well. Um, Post it on Instagram, it is a line killer. You point it in a direction and it will go there. Um, super, super happy with that truck right now. Uh, may even be my most capable truck just because of the tire size, the high overdrive, um, and the pretty low center of gravity. So really happy with where it's at. The uh, shock bands made all the difference in the world. They keep everything sucked down. It doesn't want to unload when going uphill. And uh, yeah, got a lot of running footage of that. That running footage is shot from my transmitter the same way the competition running footage was, but uh, wasn't in a competition, so actually made sure the truck was in frame. And on that note, I would like to apologize for the poor video of the running footage from the competition. You know, the four courses, um, wasn't really my intention to get it perfect. I knew it wasn't going to happen. I was actually pretty happy with how much the truck was in frame. You guys may disagree, but, uh, the whole reason I left a lot of that in there and I put in one of the videos, a little comment on the bottom, um, it was just, I wanted you to hear, uh, the conversation from the spotter. You could hear the call outs from the judges, hear the time going off. It's really, so you guys can kind of hear what all is going on through, you know, the ears of a driver and quote unquote, see it all unfold, even though you couldn't see some of it. Uh, in addition, I ran the, my orange tube buggy quite a bit as well. And I'll link that video up here. Um, it's been on the channel once for the RC garage tour. I called it my favorite RC probably still is only because, um, it's pretty much unobtainable. The guy won't build the chassis for people. He doesn't take orders. It's just something that I happened into had the, you know, spare cash for it, made the purchase and then found out later just how rare and, uh, 
how hard it is to get one. In addition, uh, the third day, Sunday, I did some C3 judging help. I just ran the timer for a couple of C3 drivers on one course. Um, pretty cool seeing C3, much less competitive. Uh, the trucks are really, really high performing, but a lot of guys, it's just no big deal to them. A lot of them run their C2 without even putting a rear steer axle on it or anything. Then they're definitely just out there to have fun. I ran the timer for the guy who won C2 um, while he was running C3 on one course. And he was, you know, just uh, kind of BSing the whole time he's driving, joking about the mistakes he was making and whatnot. So pretty low stress environment, um, pretty fun actually. And uh, I think I would really enjoy C3. They were kind of acting in C3 like I was acting in C2. Um, just out there smiling, having a good time, enjoy, you know, pushing themselves and kind of getting better. I wanted to let you guys know, I did intend to film the C2 finals and I have a couple of clips. I'll put them at the very end of this. Um, if you want to stay to the end and watch, you'll get a little bit. Um, didn't really want to intrude. They also had a rule. Um, I'll post a little video here, some B-roll from my drone. If you've never seen Cherokee Rock Village, they have, it's basically a park on top of a hill and they have these rock outcroppings. At least that's where the competitions are. There's tons of stuff. There's like caves and straight 40 foot vertical rock walls. But most of the courses are put on these um, kind of outcroppings near the pavilion. And they're six feet, 10 feet off the ground. And basically they had a rule where if you weren't the driver, the spotter, a judge or a sponsor, you weren't allowed up there. They made one exception. Joe from Exo Cage was up there filming. He got a lot of good footage, I think, from the finals. So, um, you know, go check his channel out. I'm sure he'll be doing a video on the C2 finals. I don't know if he filmed the other finals. Um, C1, I think he was there as well, but I was already gone by C3. But like I said, there'll be a couple clips at the end of this. You guys can see, uh, hopefully, you know, just how crazy the finals courses are. Nobody finished the C2 finals course. Most of the guys pointed out, but a few of them DNF'd as time expired. So I ended up leaving a little bit early. They did uh, the door prizes or the raffle um, actually Saturday night. And then they just had everything labeled when people showed up on Sunday. So I actually won a, a GK uh, class one competition chassis, um, the full kit, all the cross braces and stuff like that. Um, so looking to build a C1 uh, comp rig at some point in the you know distant future. The entire event was was awesome. Um, the people running it were great. Um, sometimes they may seem a little short with you. If you go to your first event and it kind of seems like that, they're not being rude. They're just extremely busy. This uh, event, East Coast Championships, had not only the three classes for Sorka, class one, two, three, but it also had five competition crawling uh, classes going on as well. You had 1.9, 2.2, there was a super mini, and I'm probably missing one as well, MOA. I don't know the competition stuff as well, but um, those are the, the quote unquote robots you hear people talk about, especially the supers. Um, I did see some of the MOA guys running, it looked really, really cool. Uh, being able to burn rear, burn front. Um, they can do some wild stuff. But the fact that they had um, three or four courses for all eight of those classes uh, means that they had, you know, 30 to 40 courses to manage, to score, um, to judge. They were extremely busy. So they were all friendly, um, but they were efficient. I thought things were ran pretty well and uh the whole thing went smoothly the prizes that the sponsors donated to give out i think were all worth more than the price of a ticket um so uh price of admission ended up you know yielding me a chassis that was worth about twice as much as my ticket for class two so pretty happy with it and uh overall good experience all right so that wraps up you know day three slash the entire event um, like I said, go back and watch the other two vlogs if you're kind of interested in seeing a little more specifics on the first day I competed and the second day where I had a course to run. But it's time to move on into the lessons learned. 